All right, ladies and gentlemen, six weeks. That's when they say the hearings for the uh, Supreme Court nominee that uh, Donald Trump uh, selected, uh, Judge Gorsuch, will take place. And, oh boy, that's going to be something to see. Joining us now is William Jacobson, professor of law at Cornell Law School, director of the Security Law Clinic at Cornell, and founder of LegalInsurrection.com. Good to talk to you again, sir. Great to be back. All right. So let me, uh, let me ask you, first of all, uh, your... Uh, your thoughts on uh, Neil Gorsuch? Well, by all appearances, it's a home run at multiple levels. It's a home run because he should be Scalia 2.0, which is the terminology a lot of the leftist critics are using. Uh, he is somebody highly recommended by the Federalist Society, and they have vetted him, and I trust their judgment. So substantively, he should be a very solid conservative justice on the Supreme Court. But politically, it's an even more brilliant move because the Democrats are absolutely itching for a fight on this first nomination. And Donald Trump picks somebody who has impeccable credentials, who is getting praise even from liberal law professors. And so this is the fight the Democrats want, but I'm not sure it's really the fight they need because there will be potentially more nominees. And if they blow their credibility and if they blow their goodwill on this first one and they force the Republicans to change the rules to eliminate the filibuster, I think it's going to backfire on them. So at multiple levels, I think this was a brilliant choice. Yeah, and you could have a lot of Democrats who are up for re-election in two years in the Senate um, in states that Trump won that uh, are going to find it hard to, uh, to really find anything wrong with this uh, this nominee, and so uh, it's going to be very interesting. Uh, and Donald Trump, what do you what do you make of Donald Trump this morning, or just before we went on the air, saying if we don't get the 60 votes uh, needed in the Senate for confirmation, go nuclear? Well, I think that's been a consistent view of his. I think he's expressed that before, or at least some of his spokespeople have. And I think the Republicans have to, if they are going to filibuster this nominee, the, and the Republicans in the Senate do not go nuclear and eliminate the filibuster. There is going to be an incredible uprising within the Republican I Party. I couldn't agree more. It, I, yeah, I it would, people are going to go berserk if the Democrats filibuster this nominee and the Republicans don't respond with the nuclear option. Remember, Harry Reid just last fall predicted that if Hillary Clinton won and the Democrats regained control of the Senate, they would go nuclear. Uh, the vice presidential candidate, Tim Kaine, threatened the same thing. So how is it that we would be sitting here February 1 or in February or in March when the vote takes place and the Democrats did it in 2013 for all judicial nominees below the Supreme Court le level and threatened to do it just a couple of months ago if the Democrats won the White House and the Senate? If Republicans back down on this, there is going to be a civil war within the Republican Party. Yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't agree with you more. All right, let's talk about what the Democrats are pulling with the, uh, the confirmation of uh, the, uh, the nominees uh, for cabinet positions. Uh, today, it was a it was very uh, uh, brutal uh, uh, hearing, uh, vote before the hearing, and uh, it was passed. Uh, Jeff Sessions' nomination got to the, full, the floor of the Senate 11 to 9 along party lines. But yesterday in the Senate Finance Committee, you had the Democrats walking out, and which I believe is unprecedented, uh, delaying a vote because the rules stated that you have to have at least one member of the minority party, in this case one Democrat, present for a vote. They all left. So that held up the nomination of uh, Mnuchin for Treasury Secretary and uh, Price for HHS. Today, the, Democrat, uh, the Republicans on the Finance Committee uh, changed the rule and said, you're not here, we don't need you. And they voted the uh, nomination out of committee and put it to, on the floor of the Senate. Um, I, again, what the Democrats are pulling here uh, can't be good for the future of the body. Well, it's not just good for the Senate, but it's really not good for the Democratic Party. Those senators are caught between a rock and a hard place. Their base, the, the Bernie Sanders wing of the Democratic Party, the Elizabeth Warren wing, they are out for uh, retribution. They want to fight to the last person. The problem is Republicans control the Senate. They can change the rules. So they can go through all this maneuvering, at the end of the day, they may satisfy their base, but they make themselves look stupid. 
I think that was even the word or something idiotic. I think Orrin Hatch used that what they're doing is idiotic. And Orrin Hatch is not somebody who's given to flamboyant language, even like saying idiotic. Right. And it is idiotic. They are going to kill themselves politically in order to satisfy the left wing of the party. And they have a lot of senators up for re-election yep. in 2018, and, and, I believe. And in red states, too. I think 10 of them, 9 or 10 or 11, are in red states, in states that Trump won. Yep, yep, absolutely. They, they, could, be, they could be faced with the situation in 2018 where the filibuster no longer matters because... Republicans conceivably could pick up eight seats in 2018. Very, very true. I want to get you, before we leave, we have a little, yep. just about a minute left or a little less. 49% um, of Americans agree with the executive order by Trump on travel and, and the ban, and uh, 41 don't. Um, constitutional, no doubt about it? Um, I believe that it is. Uh, I think that whether detaining certain people at a certain time was constitutional, deprived them of due process, et cetera. That's a very narrow issue. But generally speaking, a president has very wide authority when it comes to immigration matters and security matters. Right. I find it hard to believe a court, at least an appellate court, right. would say that this isn't in his power. Gotcha. Uh, I thank you, uh, uh, Professor Jacobson. Thank you very Great. much. Thank you for having me.